uh, about 80% done, 90% done, and it has now taken the sample. It is now uploading it to the app, which will then communicate with us. You've just taken another sample, just came through. Legitimately, it's 9.58 right now on my phone, and uh, we just got that sample that we just took. So one thing that I like about agriculture is that actually we adopt technology really darn fast. Think about farmers, they're the guys wearing the bibs. Heck, they're probably using a rotary phone still, but actually agriculture is probably one of the sectors that adopts technology and implements it into the, our work days or every single day life practices really darn quick. Let's take one for example. Everybody's seen one of these before. This is your old fashioned soil probe. What happens if some AI technology can improve that? Let's take you through the first few steps of actually how old school way, maybe soon, soil sampling happened. The first thing you would have to do, unless you're gonna take your own soil samples, is get a hold of a company that would pull your soil samples, uh, like Colt Mister behind the camera here. The soil sampling in the fall will do soil sampling all year long, but a lot of soil samples happen during the fall. So you gotta get a hold of somebody, call them, tell them you wanna come out here and get your soil sampling done. You gotta decide what grid you wanna be on and the things along those lines and that changes the price of your soil samples. So first step in soil sampling, pull up a map, create a grid, and then go drive to those specific points. Let's say right here is one of those points. Take a catch bucket and your soil probe. Soil probes come in all different sizes. This is a little bit of a smaller soil probe. So you need to pull about in the neighborhood of one pound of soil uh, for what labs want. I usually walk all the way around the U ATV, UTV, whatever I'm driving to kind of get uh, multiple cores to showcase a different area. That way we stay somewhat consistent or averages out one sample location. But I end up with about six to eight cores Per sample, so you do this, and then if you're doing a two acre grid, you can just do the math on how many times you have to get out and do this on an 80 acre field. It's a lot. So you pull all these cores and you end up with, well, I'll just show you. They look like little plugs. Pretty much that there is your core. It's a plug. They can come shoot on out. You tap them into your bucket here. You get a bucket, catch pan, whatever you want to say with your cores. You then take this, we'll go back to my truck, and we put it into a sample bag. So at this point in time, you've now paid somebody, if you haven't paid yourself, to come out and take this sample. You then collect the sample and you put it into a bag here. Like I said, you need a pound of it. So that leads to the next point, a pound of soil per sample and if you're doing an 80 acre field and you're going to pull 40 samples you're uh, going to have 40 pounds worth of soil that you have to send in i'm just using the sandwich bag here sometimes labs send you out bags that put their ids on i use sandwich bags a lot of the times um, and then you turn around and based upon where your grid is they'll give you a sample id and so we'll just call this sample number two right here and then you take this sample right here, you turn around, you put it into your box, and then you take this box to the post office or wherever you're gonna ship it off with. You then incur your second expense where you are going to ship off the soil samples. Like I said, these boxes can get pretty heavy and the shipping costs can get pretty high. You then send it to whatever lab you're gonna to wanna to send it to and you pay them to run the test. Sometimes it takes, you know, two, three days to get the sh samples shipped off there. And then usually two to three days, you can get your samples back and then they'll send you the results. And then at that point in time, you've got to enter those results into a program to actually decide what those results are gonna tell you. But what happens if you can cut out a bunch of those expenses, use AI technology and know exactly what your soil health is right there instantaneously? Maybe we can. When I was up in Des Moines this fall, or this winter actually, uh, at the power show, I came across this company. We'll pull them out real quick. Let's 
don't know. This is the side effects of never sharpening your pocket knife. This is the side effects of using your knife as like a digging utensil, a prying utensil, a scraping utensil. And at the end of the day, it's not a hammer, Clark. Nope, it's not. But <laughs> it, anything you swing hard enough is. I came across this company right here, Crystal Labs. I was walking around and I saw what they had there and I was like, that is pretty darn cool. And that is something that maybe some YouTube viewers might be interested in seeing how it works. Just showcasing what technology in agriculture can do. So in this box is actually a, basically a soil probe that uses AI technology to learn soil sampling and uh, pretty much give you instantaneous readouts of what your soil health is communicating with your app on your phone. It comes in a military grade box. Maybe a little child proof. But we're learning this right with you guys. Just so you guys know, Ben carries safety scissors in his pocket. Am I missing something? Oh no, it's just, oh man, that's a nice box. Like, look at that, look at that hinge action. That's, like, that's firm. That's, that's some hinge action. Look. Soil bags. Soil bags. In the box we have <laughs> something. Shipping label. This is, uh, we'll talk about this in a second. So in the box, oh, we'll step back here. So when you go to get a probe, they actually do an onboarding with you. So you set up a phone call or a Zoom meeting or something along those lines. And you actually go through a little bit of a training process with Crystal Labs to know how to use this probe. But in the box here, it comes with a few things. This is, I believe, what they call the pre-hole tool. Like, uh, to create a hole for the probe to go into. Uh, cleaning towels here. This here is a foot pedal. The handle for the top of the pre-tool. Charging cable. Instruction manual. The probe itself. A protective sleeve for the probe and handles for the probe. From what I understand is that this probe uses AI technology to basically calibrate itself and learn to give accurate soil sample results. So there is a learning process that they try and use which, with each probe, which includes taking some soil samples like you guys just saw um, and sending them into a lab so that the base that this probe uses can expand and become more and more accurate uh, knowing different types of soil types composites all those types of things because these guys go everywhere but we're going to try and do a sample here so let's take some things out and get them assembled this here is the probe that will give us our instant reading there's where the sensor is the communication uh, point on the top is right here this will also show up uh, and communicate with your cell phone using an app or whatever else you're wanting to use so we install the handles by depressing a button a button a button depress a button did you Depressing. have a donut this morning i did not i can tell you're not thinking very clear yeah, other than that, in case you still don't have them blueberries handles on the probe are installed we'll put the protective sleeve on it then we'll install or assemble our pre-hole tool Whew. assembled fun let's go make a hole real fast take this spot right here up and out did you already download the app yeah how many sure. didn't see that coming so I have the app downloaded on my phone here uh, which will communicate with the probe to show what soil samples I've got we do have the soil sample probe turned on uh, right here we've got a green light which says that with the GPS location is uh, it's been found there's a few modes and things along those lines 
we'll uh, talk about those here in a second. So we have our hole already here. So we'll gently insert the probe into the hole. All the way down. Make sure that it's in there. So we've got our green, solid green. We're gonna hit our sample button here. And now the yellow blinking light that you see right there uh, basically means that the sample is in progress. You don't want to touch the probe during this. You can see possibly a little bit of a progress bar here as it goes across. It also has the uh, data of what the ID of that sample is, which is Y5JE. It is now sending us up to the cloud, the app, basically this sample data that we just collected. Now we pull the probe out, take the towel, clean it off so that there's not dirt from that sample, put the protective sleeve back on, and we can go to the next hole. So there's some functions that we will talk about here in a second, but let's check out what those results look like on the app. So we'll dive into a screen recording here to show you guys the kind of what we're looking at here. As we look at it, it says the probe the probe tag so that's the probe that it just came from the geolocation so the latitude longitude so where you could go back to where that location of that probe so basically bulk density that looks like that's in beta i'm not exactly sure what that is but it can kind of show you what this soil samples read out here so we got our buffer ph um a lot of these you know take some pretty smart people to kind of understand so i like to look at my soil ph uh one to one 6.86 pretty decent for us um organic matter 3.69 percent uh it's got organic carbon i think i believe that this soil probe will give you out 37 different readings uh what you want to learn from those readings you know you can actually filter what you want to see uh based upon you know maybe you just want to look at your macros or something like that you, that's what you want to look at you know for me that's what i focus on the most of because a lot of the fields that we get i gotta fix the macros before i worry about the micros anyways but you can kind of see just all of the things that that probe just instantaneously gave us uh by reading it you know there's the temperature apparently again this probe actually comes from canada so they're using celsius uh the humidity pressure all that stuff right here uh where we took that sample at that point in time that's way faster and way cooler than uh old-fashioned way of getting your samples and other than the cost of the probe it didn't cost me anything to have it sent in so now that we've just saw a quick glimpse of what that probe can do we'll get back right to it but like i said these probes have been around for a really long time but the reason that we sample a lot of the times the one that i get like the most payback from instantaneously is liming uh you can pay for your samples by writing a prescription for lime, getting your pH correct. A way that I always kind of talk about, you know, soil health and knowing what your soil health is, is that you got to learn it by soil sampling. I always say that the pH of your ground is like the foundation of your house. You can't build a good house if you don't have a good foundation, so you start with the pH, and that is controlled by lime. Now, you can go one away too far, and a lot of, we'll just call them the old timers, the old school way of thinking about it, is that you spread three ton of lime every three, five years, and then you're good. Your pH is gonna be right. Well, not necessarily. Um, sometimes you're maybe along a gravel road and it naturally gets a little bit of lime dust in out there, you don't need it. Sometimes this part of the field might need three ton of lime. Sometimes this part of the field might need one ton of lime. That part over there might need five. That part over there might need zero. So if you turn around and overspread that part, you're de doing a detriment. And then if you underspread that part over there, your field didn't get put into uh, the correct fertility level or pH range that you need it to be in. So by soil sampling, you can turn around, write yourself a prescription, apply the right amount of lime in the right places, maybe saving yourself some cost on the lime, 
paying for the samples, but there you've built the foundation of your house. And at that point in time, you can turn around to build the walls and the roof. And that's what I call into the macros. And I think after you get that finally figured out and worked along the lines, that's when you can start to look at all those fancy micronutrients everybody likes to talk about. And that's all the fancy pictures and furniture that you can put in your house. That's the way I look at soil health. Other people have different views about it, but you need to know what your soil health is at, and that's the importance of soil sampling. What we just saw was how to take one sample. Well, there's a couple of ways that people soil sample fields, and the probe can accommodate those. So let's say, for example, what we just saw was grid soil sampling. That's where you go out and set your grid size to a certain number of acres. Some people do every single acre on that grid. Some people do a two acre grid. Some people do a five acre grid. Then some people will do zone soil sampling. So they might soil sample a certain soil type, take multiple samples from in that zone. And then at that point in time, that's how they collect their data and make their prescriptions and do everything off of it that way. The other thing people might wanna do is just basically have a group soil sample. So that means that they might just drive around through their field, take soil samples all throughout their field, send in one soil sample or maybe a couple soil samples off of that, and then batch it all together. And that would give you basically an average of what that field would do. So for example, something that that might work in really easily uh, with something like this, say you just got done with the cutting of hay, and you want to know should i throw some fertilizer out there real quick well you cut a 15 acre hay field let's go out there let's go take five six samples batch it all together look at that soil report see if you need the fertilizer out there make a decision from there so let's uh demonstrate how actually this here can pull it together and do like a group sample so now if we look at this right here um, we've now entered the composite mode. You can see it starts out with a C there, CQVR6. So now it's in the composite mode. When I was saying composite or sand, like a group sample, that's basically like we will take multiple samples with this probe and get one reading from it. So let's go try that out. Let's go uh, to the gourd patch of the pumpkin farm here. Bit of a sneak peek here. Uh, you guys haven't seen this yet on the channel. This is actually, uh, the pumpkins have been planted right here where we're standing is actually like the little gourd section of the pumpkin patch. So if you look out here behind us, you can see the white flags here. I would say that we've got in the neighborhood of uh, 80 by 100 area. Let's turn around and take four composite samples from this to see what the soil health is looking like for our gourd patch. We'll do it in real time. We will take the pre-hole, we'll enter it into the soil to the depth that we kind of want to get to. We'll pull it out, we'll kick a core out. They actually send you a tool to be able to clean that with. But of course, um, I'm doing it the farmer way and just getting her done with my foot. We insert the probe into the soil sample. Now you want to insert this all the way down. Uh, you try and go as vertical as possible. It should be a snug fit. If it's not, you might have to crumble in a little dirt around it. We're in the right mode. Again, we're gonna hit the green button right here. It's now blinking, yellow light. It is taking the soil sample. That's 25% done. It's continuing to take the sample. And then as it takes the sample here, I'll pull up my app three quarters of the way done, showing you how long it takes to take one of these samples. Uh, about 80% done, 90% done, and it has now taken this sample. So now it is uploading it with a, you can see a little cloud icon on there. It's probably really hard to see that on a phone, but it is now uploading it to the app, which will then communicate with us. So there we have just taken another sample, just came through. Legitimately, it's 9.58 right now on my phone, and uh, we just got that sample that we just took. That is how that how fast that it is. But we're gonna go take three more samples real quick. It actually has um, some depth indications on there. So here's the six inch, eight inch, and then we hit the sample ID again. 
it starts to take the next sample and it actually has on it you guys can see that an indicator for number two which means that this is the second sample on this composite and i like this is the first legitimately this is the third sample that i've done with this so just with the onboarding and stuff this is this is the extension extent of my experience so if it seems like it's freaky because it's technology this isn't so bad okay except for you can't read the screen with polarized sunglasses on i'll learn that at some point if we're good to go there pull it out clean it sleeve to hole number three there it is sample number three done Cleaned it off. Protective sleeve. Come on over this way. Let's do one last one. Next sample. Now we're on the fourth sample of giving us a little bit of an average for this area. Um, we're growing some more gourds and pumpkins actually at Molly's mom's here. That area is definitely something that I would consider doing because I got a feeling the fertility, it's actually a horse arena. So <laughs> probably need some uh, fertilizer slung out there. But there we go, test number four has been completed and it's sending it up to us. Let's go. Take a look at the results. So now that I have done all four samples, I hit the set button here on the probe. That batches those four samples together, I believe. So if you were to go do your next zone, you would be able to uh, move to that zone and start with your next zone. So let's jump back into the phone here and look at the results of that. The soil samples here now, so you can see the one that was Y5JE, that is the single sample. Uh, then we have the CQVR6 that has the four samples put together there. So we can click onto that. It shows the four samples that were included. I think you can click on those individual samples to look at them themselves uh, if you wanted to. So actually you're still gaining uh, basically the benefits of individually sampling because you can evaluate the individual samples if you think you have an outlier in there but then you can also just get a quick look at it as in the whole sample area put together the composite sample to see what that little bit of that area is so now i can say hey the gourd area right there has a, a ph of a 6.98 or maybe a little bit high there um, but then you can also look at everything else. Like I said, 37 different samples, uh, that that probe can learn, uh, that the probe can communicate with you. Yes, all this is on the app, but I do believe there is a desktop or I do know there is a desktop that you can view all this information as well on. Uh, like I said, you just saw us unbox it. This is the first time that we've been using it. This is pretty darn cool. This is how AI technology and technology and agriculture continues to improve the way that we as farmers do our processes. Now, the big question is, that I asked, was how accurate is this? So this is what Chris Lab says about soil sampling and soil sampling variation or variability. So variation is always going to exist in the industry, especially when you start comparing results between several different soil analysis labs. What the probe offers is an increased flexibility and a faster turnaround time and the ability to collect more data when compared to a traditional labs in the industry. Uh, a university study recently showed that the Crystal Labs probe is not only more accurate than other digital sensors, but also enhanced functionality allowing the performer wider ranges of tasks. So the question is, is the soil probe accurate? Yes, it is. And it will actually continually get more and more accurate with the AI technology as they continue to do updates to the probe. Is it the same as sending in a soil sample to a soil lab? Will you get the exact same results? Probably not. But would you get the exact same results if you took one of those samples that we took just a minute ago, divided it in two and send it into the same lab? Probably not. But is it what we want to see going forward? 
yes it is so do i have faith in this so far yes we'll continue to learn with it we'll continue to use it and use it like in season applications like if you're going around through your field and you find one area of your crop that doesn't look so good maybe it might be time to bust out the crystal lab soil probe go take a couple of samples see maybe what's going on in that compared to the rest of the field see what you need to do to improve that zone of your field definitely another tool in the farmer's hands i'm liking it i'm embracing the technology if you're interested in one of these probes i was not paid to make this video but they did say that they'll send me out with the link so if you're going to go check one of these out use that link down in the description might give us a little bit of a kickback to the channel we truly appreciate it very cool technology thanks for checking let me check it out guys we'll see you guys in the next one so like i said the soil sample id on that one was y5je it was says that we took it at 9 33 in the morning here and on june 15th which was actually today that doesn't make sense <laughs> <laughs> uh, try that again. <laughs> so they, there you go. So June fifteenth, as in today, you got the results right there, right away.